type of energy that, than the one we use in our normal work. So for example, what is considered rest for someone who does a lot of physical work, let's say a farm laborer, will be different from what would be considered rest for a teacher because the, the type of energy that, that is applied in those activities are different. So a teacher may, may benefit resting, maybe being quiet and listening to music or to something, whereas someone who does a lot of physical work may want to be physically inactive. A person whose work involves long periods of sitting, let's say they, they, they travel a lot or they sit in front of a screen for most of the day, then resting could actually involve something like taking a, a walk or even swimming or something that requires some physical activities. So just to say that uh, this indicates that rest means a change from what we are normally doing, because when you keep on doing the same thing over and over, we tend to lose our edge. So by taking a break, we actually, uh, it's like the person who takes a break to sharpen their, the woodcutter who takes a break to sharpen his ax. He's going to uh, spend some time not actually cutting the wood, but he, when he starts cutting the wood, he'll be doing a faster and better job of it because his axe is, normal, is going to be sharp after he has taken some time to sharpen it. So when we think about rest, we should think about it in that way as something which is going to make us more productive and more vigorous and better able to cope. So when we set aside time for resting, we should not look at it as wasted time that we should be spending doing something more active. So then uh, how about sleep? Sleep on the other hand refers to a state of reduced mental and physical activity during which our consciousness is altered and our senses are detached from the environment. If you think about it, when we are awake, our senses are always absorbing information from around us. Our eyes are seeing things. So if you think, for example, at this moment, I hope you're wide awake. Your, your ears are hearing, maybe your eyes are seeing something. Maybe you are moving around. For those of us who usually are uh, multitaskers, we could be preparing dinner or uh, maybe supervising homework or something. But uh, yeah, when we are awake, we all, all of our senses are in one way or another engaged with our environment. And at the same time, we find that we have to be conscious and aware. Maybe we are driving or something of that nature, which requires us to be quite alert. Or we could be walking or physically doing something like we're doing some work in the house or something like that. So all this means that when we are awake, our senses are engaged with the environment our consciousness is, is high, and of course, our activity would also be relatively high depending on what we are doing. So when we sleep, then all this is changed because we reduce all the, the mental and physical activities. Our senses slow down or switch off. And uh, maybe you have ever had this interesting uh, situation in which you fall asleep and you stop hearing. Then when you wake up, you realize that you stopped hearing, but the sounds were still there. It's because this, the, the, the ear stopped hearing. It's not that the sounds actually stopped. So it's an interesting thing how our, our senses shut down. But we'll see as we progress with the session that this is quite beneficial for us. So sleep allows the body and the mind to take a break from that constant state of collecting and processing data. Our senses collect the data and our brains process it and respond to it. So sleep is not, it's not only a unnecess necessary part of a healthy lifestyle, it is also one of the best and healthiest performance enhancers that we know of. So sleep is actually a performance enhancer because once we get, we, we have good sleep, we are able to perform better. And we'll see the reasons why further down the, the, the session. So when we are thinking about a healthy lifestyle, we need to think about sleep because it has got very many ways in which it benefits us as well as safeguards us from um, certain harmful things that can happen when we are deprived from adequate sleep. So uh, I, the, the researchers estimate that um, a human being needs seven to nine hours of sleep every night, 
And less than six hours is actually said to show the beginnings of sleep deprivation, meaning that you are now having the effects of not having slept enough. So then I want to move to another, um, after introducing those uh, aspects, and uh, let me go to what we refer to as sleep hygiene. Of course, we are aware of the word hygiene. We normally think about it in terms of cleanness and keeping our, um, our environment germ-free. But when we speak about sleep hygiene, we are speaking about something different. It refers to the habits, behaviors, and environmental factors which can be adjusted to enhance the quality and duration of our sleep. So the, the points of uh, sleep hygiene that we look at are our habits, our behaviors, and some environmental factors that come into play. And these ones can be adjusted in such a way that either they are detrimental or enhancing to the quality and duration of our sleep. So I'll look at some of the points, definitely not all of them, but some of them maybe you can read further on. Uh, the first is darkness. We are a diurnal organism. That is, we, are, we have evolved to operate during daylight hours and to sleep at night. This is how we have evolved, and this is what is normal for human beings. So it is important, therefore, for us to get good quality sleep to make our environment as dark as we can manage. And of course, this, this differs with people. It could be a matter of uh, that uh, light is required for security or for some other reason, but uh, we should try to, to get the environment as dark as we can because it does enhance the good quality of sleep. It is also a good practice to switch off screen, screen devices at least two hours before bedtime. So a thing that I find useful is to, do, to set an alarm, not for only for waking up, but for going to bed. So let us say, for example, I've estimated that uh, in order for me to get enough sleep, I need to go to bed at 10. I can set an alarm for nine o'clock. So from nine o'clock, I know I'm starting to wind down my activities. Maybe I'll switch off my screen so that I will maybe only be listening to something. Let's say I was looking at a screen. I can switch off so that I'm only listening. That is only the audio is available. I will maybe if I had some tasks that I was doing, I will see that I don't start new tasks too close to bedtime because then the task might overflow into the time I planned to go to bed. So I think it's a good practice for us generally to have that alarm for warning us that we should now be winding down our day and our activities so as to prepare ourselves mentally and physically for slowing down into sleep. Uh, it is also uh, useful, uh, many of the screens we have now, whether it's on the phone or on the laptops and, uh, and such, have got um, blue light protectors, which uh, make the light, uh, change the light so that it does not um, offend against our sleep. So if you check in your phone settings, you probably will find that uh, many of the, the phones we have nowadays have that, sleep, uh, that, that uh, eye protection and uh, light protection because the blue light is actually very adverse to our sleep and um, mental relaxation. So you can switch it on. Maybe if you use it during the day, you should definitely switch it on as the evening wears out so that uh, you do not get the disturbance that comes from uh, blue light emanating from the screens in your house. And this is also important for children because where, whereas adults will need the six to eight to nine hours that I spoke about, this is even more crucial for children and young adults. A lot of time the young adults don't take this seriously and it might be a bit of a battle to get them to get the right amount of sleep. But it is important to understand that sleep is not a waste of time. It is actually a very important part of health. And for the, the growing children, especially, it's very crucial that they realize that it is very important to protect sleep time. I know that our children were always very resistant to going to bed. It was always a bit of a battle, but it's a habit that they need to learn. If uh, further down the line they neglect it, at least you would have taught them that this is important. Then uh, the next uh, point is silence. Silence is also important for sleep. 
Of course, again, this um, it will be different for different people staying in different places. If you're in the countryside, maybe silence is not a problem to, to, to have in our environment. Whereas if you're in the city, maybe living near a highway, it might be different. But just to understand that um, it is important, where it is very difficult to find, to, to maintain silence, then what can be used is what is called white noise, like a, a, a dull background noise, a neutral type of background noise that helps to, to prevent uh, sudden noises from waking, waking you up. On the other hand, you can also use earplugs if it is very problematic. So for example, if you're traveling in an airplane and you'd like to catch up on your sleep, then earplugs can also be useful. Um, some people I included are not very comfortable with earplugs, but if you are, they are also helpful if you are having a difficult a difficulty in maintaining silence during your sleeping hours. Then the next thing I want to speak about is stimulants. We have different kinds of stimulants, cool drinks and uh, beverages like coffee and so on. It is advisable not to take uh, stimulants after 12 o'clock in the daytime because their re residual effect, if taken late in the day, can actually reduce the quality of our sleep. So if you're a coffee drinker, maybe take it early in the earlier parts of the day in the morning before noon. And once it's afternoon, maybe switch on to less stimulating drinks so that you do not have uh, this reduced quality of sleep. Of course, this again is subjective. I know that some people don't get affected by drinking something like coffee late in the day, but others are. And I also notice uh, for myself that as I have grown older, the effect is even more pronounced. So maybe if in uh, your middle years or, late, uh, or elder years you're struggling with sleep, you can look at your intake of stimulants like uh, coffee and tea and so on. Another one to mention is alcohol, which initially seems to be relaxing, but is uh, seriously impairs the quality of sleep because uh, the sleep you get after drinking a fair amount of alcohol is not of a good quality. It's more like sedation than sleep, you know, like the sedation you are given when you're in hospital. So drinking alcohol is more like that than like um, sleep. Therefore, uh, it's, we, we are always cautious about the amount of alcohol that uh, can be safely used. And at the same time, it is a good idea to realize that um, taking a large amount of alcohol actually prevents, prevents us from uh, getting into the deeper restorative sleep. Just now we are going to talk about the sleeping cycle and that there are different levels of sleep. Um, if we take a lot of alcohol, our brains are not able to close to close down and go into deep sleep. It's rather we stay in shallow sleep and we keep on cycling between being half awake and half asleep. And that is why you will normally notice that um, if someone has been drinking heavily and they wake up, they may sleep, seem to be sleeping very deep, but when they wake up, they are not refreshed. It's because it is poor quality sleep that they have got, not good quality deep sleep that is restorative to the systems. Then the last thing I'll mention in this section is the what is called the circadian rhythm. Maybe this is familiar to you. Uh, all living things, actually, most, most living things, let me say, have got uh, a 24-hour cycle that uh, has got certain rhythms in it that affect the systems of the living things. So the, this uh, circadian rhythm is influenced by daylight and darkness. So we as human beings, our system, as I mentioned before, have evolved to be diurnal. That is to be active during the day and uh, sleeping during the night. So uh, this rhythm influences many things. So the circadian rhythm influences uh, a number of things in us. This includes our sleep patterns. It includes our appetites, hormone productions, and a number of other things. So this is not really up to us. It's simply the way our system has been made. And our bodies benefit when we work together with our circadian rhythm rather than against it. So for instance, if you have a job that requires you to be awake, 
the, uh, and uh, awake during the night and asleep during the day, then it is important to do a few things to mitigate against the, the disruption of the circadian rhythm. And so sleeping, and also to just realize that sleeping at odd times, like let's say taking a nap, can impair the quality of our sleep. If let's say I take a nap during the day, if uh, I'm not sick or something like that, then it may actually impair the quality of my sleep at night. So the circadian rhythm is actually impo an important thing to take note of as far as possible to do our activities during the daylight hours and to sleep during the night. And where we, because of maybe our job or illness or having to take care of a sick person, we find that we have to spend long hours awake at night we can see what we can do to actually mitigate against that to ensure that we are um, making up for the sleep that we are, the quality of sleep that we are not getting. Then uh, let's now look at the sleeps, the quality of sleep itself. So a good sleep has got um, three or four stages depending on how someone is counting. So the first stage is called the light sleep. That is a brief stage that occurs when we are falling asleep. During that stage, our heart rate begins to drop, our breathing slows down, and our muscles begin to relax. Then the next stage is called um, the deep sleep. So during this, the, during this second phase, the heartbeat continues to slow down. Remember, it had started slowing down in the first stage. Then the body temperature starts dropping and the eyes stop moving in the socket. So you will, if you are looking at someone in this stage of sleep, their eyes now remain still in the socket. Then the third phase is called the delta sleep or the slow wave sleep. During this stage, this is called the deepest sleep states. So this is what we refer to when we are speaking about deep sleep or restorative sleep. So from, from this stage of sleep, it is hard to wake up because the, 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 the systems have, have really been taken down, down, down. Then there are three crucial things that happen during this stage of sleep, that is the delta sleep. Number one, the body repa repairs damaged tissues. Number two, the immune system is rejuvenated. And number three, the brain is detoxed. So this is when the brain is getting cleaned because it has been taken to very low activity. So this, as you can see, these are three very important things and other things also take place. But these three are important because you can see they are very crucial for our health. Our body needs to repair damaged tissues within it because this, our tissues always get damaged. Our immune system needs to be rejuvenated because the whole, all of our day and our life, it is always dealing with unfriendly organisms that we come across. And our brain need to be detox because it is very active the whole day. And uh, so since it cannot be cleaned during the day when it is active, the time that it is getting cleaned is when we get deep sleep. And this is why if we do not get into this deep sleep, we find that our health starts to suffer. Then the, the final stage of sleep is called the REM sleep. And during the REM sleep or REM sleep, Dreams occur, so this is the kind of sleep where we get dreams come to us, and there is rapid movement of eyes beneath the eye. The eyes are closed, but the eyeballs move inside the sockets. Our limbs are paralyzed, that is why there can be um, sleepwalking. And the body temperature starts to rise, and brain activity also starts to increase a little bit. So the REM sleep and, uh, is a, a stage in which it, we can find that our brain starts being active and some of the problems that we have been grappling with can actually get uh, solved in the, in, in, during REM, REM sleep and during uh, the dreams that come during REM sleep. So again, this is a very important uh, uh, stage of sleep. So in these four stages, we cycle through them throughout the night. So each of this, the stages in the cycle uh, take a certain length of time, but the whole cycle will take about 90 minutes and it will be repeated four, five or six times 
during an entire night. So you will keep on cycling through those four stages of sleep. But ideally, we should not wake up after we complete a cycle. So if we, the, the, we reach level four, it does not mean that we should wake up and start afresh. We might become slightly more awake and then fall back asleep. And uh, in many cases, we may not wake up at all. We may just cycle into lighter sleep and then descend again into deeper sleep. But the thing to note is that all of those levels are important because they have their own specific rules to play. Now let us turn our attention to sleep deprivation. So this is when we get less than six hours of sleep per night. So we may feel that we don't need so many hours of sleep, but unfortunately our physiology requires that length of sleep to do what it needs to do to keep us alive. So even though in our own mind, we may estimate that we, we, we are okay with four hours of sleep because we need to be awake and do things, our physiology is going to suffer because it does require to be down for those seven to nine hours every night. Then with time, the cumulative, cumulative effect of sleep deprivation will start manifesting in poor health. We may find things like lack of concentration or poor concentration or inability to focus our attention. So we find that uh, if we have, um, we've been awake for 20 hours continuously without uh, sleep, we start having impaired mental clarity, similar to what we would be having if we were slightly drunk. So it is actually quite, uh, quite uh, serious. And some, some other thing that hap can happen when we are deprived from sleep is what is referred to as micro sleep. This is when we, we momentarily fall asleep and then wake up again. And you can imagine if we are driving or handling other kinds of machinery, this can actually have uh, disastrous effects. So um, another reason to take care not to be deep, uh, sleep deprived. And we know this, especially in those uh, the, here on our continent where we have this long distance travel by bus, where we have drivers that drive very long hours and are sleep deprived. And you can often imagine that it can lead to accidents and uh, things like that. So micro sleep, another dangerous byproduct of sleep deprivation that then of course there is insomnia, which is the inability to sleep. This can be due to uh, habitual sleep deprivation because the more we, do, we are deprived of sleep, the more we sleep at awkward hours and the more we interfere with our proper sleep cycle. So it, uh, the studies have shown that sleep deprivation can cause us to produce some of the stress hormones like cortisol and cortis the hormone cortisol will itself disrupt sleep, which will of course become a vicious cycle because the disrupted sleep will lead to production of more cortisol which will further disrupt the sleep and the cycle goes on into more and more uh, uh, situations of being unable to sleep or having poor quality sleep. So another effect of this um, uh, increased levels of the stress hormone cortisol is that um, it makes our metabolism sluggish, it slows down our metabolism and increases fat storage. At the same time, it increases our appetite for high calorie foods. And as you can imagine, sometimes the high calorie foods are not the healthiest of foods. We may get a, a, a craving for sugary foods or junk food because we are um, feeling stressed uh, uh, as a result of having this hormone circulating in high levels in our system. And this can be how lack of sleep can contribute to us becoming overweight or struggling to maintain a healthy weight. Then uh, sleep deprivation often also leads to uh, irritability. We can find that we are short tempered and uh, irritated by things which we normally we can handle. And you can imagine as distributors or team leaders and the people who, in our business where we deal with people, we may find that irritability can be a very costly uh, mood to have as a new life distributor. Of course, many other body system will deteriorate if we are deprived from sleep. We, our immune system will suffer because we saw that it is boosted during deep sleep. The brain will get uh, will fail to get adequate detox. 
And of course, our bodily coordination can also be lowered because uh, as we are deprived from sleep, we find that our accuracy in movement can actually be impaired. Then uh, moving on to uh, the next se section of what are the benefits of good sleep, there are many. Obviously the opposite of the, the, the bad um, effects. So it, good sleep gives the brain an opportunity to eliminate toxins which are linked to certain illnesses, which in, including mental decline. Uh, another point is that it allows the, the mind to go over recent memory and sort out information so as to help us in uh, problem solving, innovative thinking, and coping with uh, situations that we might be dealing with. Then another good effect is that it will lead us to higher pro greater productivity, creativity, high energy, and good mood. Then, of course, adequate sleep and rest helps to improve our skin quality and aids in wound healing and the ability to, to support a strong immune system that will protect us from infections. Of course, another point I want to mention, the final point in this section, is that uh, our lifestyle should include uh, physical activity because this also promotes the quality, the good quality of our sleep. Then on the near life side, we have another, uh, a number of supplements that play an important role in uh, enhancing our sleep and our, um, the quality and the duration of it. The first I want to mention is magnesium complex, which helps to stabilize the sleep cycle. It also eases and relaxes our muscles and helps, to res helps us to resolve low-grade anxiety. Because you might notice that some, some people's problem with sleep is that they do not uh, fall asleep quickly when they go to bed. Some people, their problem is that they do not stay asleep. They fall asleep and then they keep on waking up so that they don't maintain uh, good sleep. And for others, they may have aches and pains, maybe from uh, different reasons. So magnesium is going to play an important role with uh, helping with muscle relaxation, uh, low-grade anxiety, and stabilizing our sleep cycle. Then we also have Calmag, which of course has got uh, magnesium together with the calcium. So if you, you maybe want to choose between the two, you can choose or you can take both. But Calmag also helps to improve the quality of deep sleep. So the deep sleep that we are trying to get. And this is because these supplements help to calm the brain down and relax the body. And it also prevents us from waking up between the cycles. So remember we say the sleep happens in cycles, one, two, three, four, and then we start again. So Calmag is going to help us not wake up each time we reach stage four. Instead, we smoothly go from stage four and go back to stage one and so on. Then the next one we have is vitamin D. So vitamin D is important in uh, helping us to regulate that circadian rhythm that we talked about and um, also maintaining sleep as well as making the hormone for sleep, which is called melatonin. So vitamin D helps with those, and thereby we find that if we are struggling with sleep, we can either supplement with, with, with vitamin D if we are not able to get enough sun exposure. Or if we get sun exposure, but because we are dark skinned, the, our skin prevents us from getting as much of the sun as we can. Because remember, if we are dark skinned, we've got a lot of pigments that protects us from the sun. And if the sun is not strong enough, the protection might be such that we need to, that, that we are not making enough vitamin D. Then aloe vera plus is another supplement that helps with relaxation and also soothes our digestive system because we know that some people struggle with sleep because their, their digestion might not be working very well. They may get some digestive discomfort and so on. Aloe vera helps a lot with that. And so we can add that. Then we also have herbal rest and relax. Uh, this is a herbal preparation, if you have it in your market, that is made from herbs that help to reduce moderate anxiety. Remember, we are speaking about moderate or low-grade anxiety, because if someone is very anxious, then, of course, the supplements might not be enough to help with resolving the anxiety. 
it would be important to take other measures to deal with the anxiety. But if it is low-grade anxiety, the hub rest and relax is going to help. And it will also assist in uh, mental relaxation in order to maintain good sleep. Then the final two will be tree and end and neo life shake. Tree and end we know is very important in assisting with tissue renewal because it works at a cellular level. And uh, so the tree and end is going to be helping us with our restoration and uh, the, the tissue repair that takes place during deep sleep. Neo Life Shake will be doing the same as it provides us with uh, essential amino acids that will be used in building new tissues in our bodies. So uh, I see I've stolen a few minutes from Pascal, but uh, I hope that uh, the session has been uh, uh, useful to you because I know we are often tempted to neglect this aspect of our health, that is the, either neglecting resting or sleeping, and as you know, towards the end of March, we'll be having the Easter weekend. So I would suggest that if you have been hard at it from the beginning of the year, maybe you can now plan that you take a little bit of time during the Easter weekend, maybe on Easter Sunday or some day like that, or a few more days if you are able to, so that you get some rest and relaxation and step away from our daily activities. Because you know, as distributors, we carry our business wherever we go. And we can find that we are working a lot, a lot, a lot. And uh, so just to keep in mind that we do, we do better if we take care of getting good sleep and getting periodic times of rest where we can draw away from our day-to-day -day activities and refresh ourselves. So thank you. Here is Pascal, ready to take you through the next session. As for myself, I wish you all the best with the month end as it progresses. Thank you very much, Betty. I think it's very important for us 